that money. Then, if this condition of God in the presence of a positive catalyst, the fire progression, progress or rather, the fire will increase rapidly. Sometimes you will be in the presence of a fire in the middle. The fire will be, pro will be progressing very slowly. That kind of fire, you may not even know there is fire over many hours. When fire now will come, fire come with some byproducts. Byproducts like smoke, fumes, all these things that they are toxic. That when they come at you, when people die in fire, it is not the fire that kills them mostly. It's the smoke. The one of the byproducts of the fire going with the smoke. This lecture, I want to center it around one. Controlling ignitions, fire ignition. How do we control them? Two, okay, yeah, it's the same thing. When there is fire, how do we get out? Four, containment. When there is fire, how do we ensure it doesn't escalate and lastly extinguishment? How do we ensure the fire is out? Now, for us to control ignitions, we must know how do we control, you need to know what will cause fire for you to control the ignition. By ignition, I mean things that will lead to fire. You want to prevent things from occurring. You don't want fire to occur. For you to ensure fire doesn't occur, you need to know what will cause fire. So we say fire are caused by three things. One, animals. Two, nature. Three, human. Animals, like rats. Rats can cause fire. When you have those wires in your house that rats are eating on the insulators, one day the wire will breach and there will be fire. Some of us, we have these perforated blocks in our house. We are told used to come in. There will be nesting under your roof. And they are putting the nest. One day someone will just be burning blue bush, right? Carelessly. They will go there, pick a member of fire, drop it in their nest, start fire. It is not a miracle. Now, let's go, let's go to nature. When there is thunder, if you have your house without proper acne, proper thunder are restored. Thunder can set the building on fire. So if you see volcano eruption and other natural causes of fire. But this is it. We want to talk about human causes. How do you cause fire? Human causes are in two ways. One is carelessness. Two is ignorance. Or let me put the two together. Human error. And the next one is human effort. Let me deal with human effort. Human effort is majorly acid. Deliberate means of setting someone's property on fire. Like an accountant has doctored the book of the university that wants to package everything. They are literally setting the office on fire. When election is coming out, you will see any office going on fire here and there. That is human effort. As in, but it should be under the law. Two is human error, carelessness, and ignorance. Maybe because you believe I've been doing like that for years. Or because you don't know. Now, let's start with that. One, overloading of electrical points. Some of us in our homes, you have this one electrical point. You have an extension you plug from the point. You plug this one, you plug that one, you plug this one. You know, you are doing improper fraction on the socket. What will happen is the wire will not be able to carry the load you are putting on it. It will breach at the time and give you fire. Get sockets for your electrical appliances. Two, using unqualified technicians. Because you don't want to pay good money. You now go to use one unqualified technician to do your work. When the work is done in an improper way, maybe 
drawing a search or maybe there's no search control and everything on your life is can lead to fire. Some of your thoughts, that is mostly common among the middle class and lower class people. When you invite an electrician to your house to fix something for you, after the business, you should become an electrician. Is that it? Is that it? Join the wire together, start tracing socket on your own, putting negative and positive together. Why you are doing it when you have a spark? You will be okay, you tell me the mistake. That's the near miss. The next spark may be more than what you can control. Now, unattended cooking. Some of us, after work, you still want to satisfy your family. You put food on fire, you are attending to your project, you are attending to your thesis or such work. But you are still cooking. You are tired already. In the course of doing that, you can sleep up. You can, you can, you can sleep up. And if you do that, if you are doing what we call unattended cooking, you can set the whole building on fire. Another one is poor housekeeping. In Nigeria, when someone buys a TV, you will install the TV, you will keep the carton. You will buy a radio, install the radio, you will keep the carton. This AC, the carton is the same way they are keeping it now. <laughs> when you ask, why are you keeping all this carton? You say, we want to go to our next house so we can use the carton. All the, all the floors, the children are not using the game, they are in the store. They are waiting for the people that will change into pockets. When you now enter the store, after you pressurize, put everything joint, you see that the store is becoming stuffy. What is happening? All of the material, they are emanating heat. Those materials will be giving more heat. When the heat will the initial temperature of any of the material in that store, fire will go up. Poor housekeeping can lead to fire. The people that play secrets, drop in a lot of secrets carelessly. Children playing with matches, fireworks, can lead to fire. You are using your gas at home, and you are one of those that doesn't inspect the rules of your gas. You just see the say, your gas is fine. Even if your, if your rat has gone and hit your hose, you don't know. All you just need is to go there, switch off, switch on, cool. One day, you will not know when rat has eaten down your hose, you just be coming in. Maybe you forgot to close the gas when you even go out. Everywhere will be true. You may want to have a call. Where do you just see that expression? Wow. There are many causes like that, like that. Another one is electrical appliances being plugged on when not in use. When you are, maybe you are hiring, maybe you are watching the TV, and then there's power outage. It's, some people will find it very hard just to stand up, go there, and switch off the appliance. Some of us, we all are sitting down here now. I believe. Our refrigerators are closed, they are not closed. They are closed. Yeah. Okay. Our refrigerators are closed, they are closed. But how do we believe they cannot lead to fire? Have you not heard that some building has been done and the fire started from the refrigerator? Have you never heard that? Okay. But we should be plugged our home. That is why I used to tell people that. This is some of the people that their house burned down. They are doing the same thing we are doing too. I had an experience. One woman, she normally cook over the night. She sells the very good things very early in the morning. So her market is how to, she normally targets the market of early morning. She, was, she has this uh, charcoal pot that she used to cook over the night. One of us, my, she did the same thing she's been doing for years. But she thought, before she could come back, the other morning, nothing is left in the shop. Nothing will be put. Now, that's my reference. So, how do you... Okay, you believe you put it on stabilizers. Okay. Have you never heard a situation whereby the fire starts from stabilizers? Okay. If the stabilizer can start fire, your refrigerator can start fire, but now you put it at home and you are here. If the fire started, are you now, you lock your door with drop blue, iron, everything, so that <laughs> no thing can come in. But you are not careful of the thing that come from inside, fire. A thing that will not lock door. A thing that will never negotiate. 
If you never ask for your money or your life, you are the one that will determine maybe to take your money, you to take your life and run away. Because if you wait, it is, it is very ready to take you, your money, your life, your everything. Now, if we can control our sort of nations, we will be able to reduce fire to the parent. Majority of fire outbreaks, even car fires. Some of the owner of car, when they give their car to maybe an electrician, maybe a mechanical place for them, they will be seen for dripping. Some of them will be seen for dripping. Some they will see all this um, engine oil, brake fluid on, 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 on all the car parts. They will not clean it. When the spark just come, those are the fire progressors. They will ensure the fire moves rapidly. Let's know by it. How do we control? Okay, I've talked about submissions. Let me now talk about communication. In developed countries, it is very important for you to put fire alarms in your house. But in Nigeria, it's not the same. But why are we putting communication devices in the building? Let me go to, I will treat it with what do you do when there's fire? Let's assume there's fire now. The very first thing to do is to raise the alarm of the fire. Raise the alarm of that fire. We attended the fire five years ago. The fire started in a room. The fire started in a room. When the fire started, the person that discovered the fire ran out. The fire started giving momentum. With time, the smoke becomes something very big, traveling to other rooms. The people that who discovered the smoke finally, they were able to rush out. There was someone sleeping. The time it will wake up. Let me put it this way. If someone is working in an environment that doesn't really support fire, the rain at which you step up will be very hard, will be very fast. If the oxygen level in the body becomes very low, I think, okay, how about the basic medical sciences? Fine. If the oxygen level in the body, because as a firefighter, I've been in a situation whereby you walk where it doesn't support light. You just feel like your height is closing, but you will not be able to control it. In that situation that the smoke is coming in, it will be knocking out the fresh air the man needs to take, leaving him with the toxic air. As the man is bringing the toxic air, he will, he will be getting weaker. When, when he tries to put his energy together and get out of the building, he opens the door. Another, another um, series of toxic things, they charge him into the building. Charge him into the the man couldn't continue the movement, he has to go back inside. But the person being keep charging him. My question, what kills the man? Communication. If the man that discovered the fire has raised the alarm of the fire, even if the man is sleeping, he will hear fire. Or if it's an automatic alarm, the man will hear the alarm standing. Either automatic alarm, manually operated alarm, maybe your mouth, your anything. When you discover a fire, the first thing is communication. Raise the alarm of the fire. Let other people know there is fire. You are saving a life if you do that. If you are not doing that, you are putting lives in risk. That is communication. Now, evaporation. When you raise the alarm of the fire, the next thing you are doing is you are leaving the fire. You are exiting the fire. As you are exiting the fire, the roof says, close the door and the window behind you, if possible to do so. Why are we closing the door and the window? I said initially that for fire to occur, fire needs oxygen. 
But by the time you close the door and you close the window, you will limit the amount of oxygen fueling the fire, coming into the fire. Some of you that try to help people fight fire in their building, you don't let people houses. Yes. When there is a fire in the building, the fire might be burning for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. The fire is closed. Maybe the person is not even inside. The door is closed, everything is closed. Someone will just go there. Let's open the door. Let's open the window. Let's open this. As the girl there, open the door. When you are opening the door, in that fire, there will be what we call incomplete combustion. There will be carbon monoxide, carbon two oxide in high I hear you, I hear you coming to outside. As you are opening the door, they will charge at you. They will pursue you. They are coming for you. When they come, you wait. You will possibly run for your life. As you are running for your life first, they will be charging to the place you will be coming back. So they will be preventing you from getting to the source of the fire. But you've already charged fresh air to that fire. And also, you charge carbon monoxide to burn the part of the building. They will heat the building, all other rooms. They will heat the door, set every other thing. They will eat it up. As they are, as they are eating it up, they will eat it up. As they are eating it up, the next thing that will happen is carbon monoxide has this property to deflagrate, mini explosion. They just do the mini explosion and transfer fire even to the rooms that. Now, they were not yet on fire. That's why I used to say, if fire, the rule says, fight fire at the incipient stage when the fire just passes. A fire that has well grown and is contained, our effort should be on how to ensure it's not spreading. Containment. Containment. If we can contain the fire to this room of origin, we will be saving every other part of the building. But when you allow the fire to travel, in the course of some people who want to get into the room, they will go through the roof, they will remove some roofing sheet, break the abestors or whatever that is there. What you are doing? You are inviting the fire to the top of the building. You can, only, the only time, they are born to say, okay, let's help these people to fight this fire should be when we are very sure we are capable. Now, as you are, you are moving out of the fire, the rule says, do not wait to collect any belonging. You know, some, sometimes people used to say it's personal belonging. No, any belonging. You only have one personal belonging. Every other thing is other people's belonging. Your personal belonging is your life. Run with it. If you think, someone asked me, I think the last lecture, that if I have gold in my house, if I have certificates, it is not personal belonging. If you have gold in fire, if someone discovers it, you will take your gold, you have involved by fire, polish it, and wear it tomorrow. You can even wear it that day. It is not your personal belonging. Your personal belonging is your life. If your certificate is burning fire, you can approach your school with fire report form of the fire outbreak. Instead of putting your life in avoidable situations, avoidable risk. As you are moving out of fire, you are moving to Motor point, assembly point. Somewhere they are in designated. Some of us, when you are at work, we just disappear. We will be looking for you. No one will know where you go. Now, when there is fire, we need to look for the assembly point. But you have disappeared. But this day now, maybe you are somewhere where the smoke is giving you the nice, is treating you nicely. You are, you are dealing with snow, but people are strong, that is how you need to go away. They will not account for you. It is very easy if you are going to the toilet. Let people know you are in the toilet. When, when there is fire outbreak, and there is, I don't think after, after you make 
to a robot, you discover someone is missing. When you think of a fighter form, you have responsibility to let them know the last known location of the person. The person will be in the toilet while they are busy pumping his office. But if they know the last location is the toilet, efforts will be made to go to the toilet. I made a, I made, I made a reference about the fire we attended in, in, in one hotel recently. When the fire occurred, we were busy fighting the fire, not knowing someone is still not escaped. Yes, to be escaped. If we know the person is still in the building, our efforts will be concentrated on saving his life. But because we don't know, no one comes to say, okay, well, we have yet to see Mr. A. When the fire is done, a man has been rescued. A man has said, oh, listen, there is one man in the building. He cannot even tell us the room. We now started looking. Do this, do this, do this, do this before we look at it. That is why it is important because the margin between life and death in fire is very minute. You are saving someone like you can say this is the last non location of the person. Now, when you get after, when you get to the assembly point, first thing, call the fire service. This is one of the mistakes we made in Nigeria. When you discover a fire, people make an attempt to fight the fire first before they call the fire service. But the rule says, call the fire service first. If you call the fire service and they come around, you've already extinguished the fire. No problem. You've done the job. Well done to both parties. But when you believe, okay, let's fight the fire, you are fighting the fire, now you discover you cannot continue fighting the fire, maybe you resist at your control, the expertise at your control cannot fight the fire, then you want to call the fire service. Let me quickly go back to what we call um, fire progression graph. When fire started, fire will start very small, something very small. It is something like fire, time. It is time against fuel. The more fuel it can come, it can consume in time. Now, when, when, when the fire started, we call it that time, in the first time, in the first stage. Within zero to two minutes, before it was zero to four minutes. But now, the material we are using in construction now, is burn very rapidly. So within zero to two minutes, fire will start growing. On that road stage, there's a point you call flash point. When your fire gets to the flash point, that is the time you will see that the fire you are seeing that is very small now is bigger. The fire you are seeing here now is here. The fire you are seeing here now is here. After that, the fire comes steadily. After that, the fire dies. If you are trying to fight the fire and you allow the fire to flash over before you call the fire service, when they are coming and the people are together, they are not going to allow them to pass. Definitely, if the youth are sitting here and the fire has already flashed down, has already flashed over here, you have you given that fire more taxi meaning to consume more properties. Call the fire service. When you call the fire service, then if you can fight the fire, fight the fire. When you want to call the fire service, give the precise information. Not that fire, 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 the fire has, No, if you give information like that, they don't capture information, you will have to replace yourself. You'll be wasting more time repeating yourself than just coming down and giving the time you want to give. Now, when the fire is out, do not go back to your building. Some of us will believe it is my property and I don't go inside. Don't just go inside. Sometimes, during the fire outbreak, the fire will have eaten from God. The world will be about to collapse. But you, the owner of the building, you don't know. The firefighters that are in the building, they know that this wall must collapse. There will be no way of walking around that wall to ensure it's not collapsing on them. But you that doesn't know, you just go there, started looking for your pot of money, your this, your that. In that course, the building might collapse. Some floor might have gone off that you don't know. The tears of the building might be very weak. Do not re-enter the building until you are told to do so by the qualified professionals. Let's now assume we are sleeping. We are already sleeping. I want us to pay very good attention. Let's say we are sleeping. 
We are sleeping, there is fire maybe in the sitting room, and the smoke has already traveled to other part of the room. How do we get out? How do we get out? Number one, if you want to get out of the fire, whenever there is fire, the smoke will travel. When the smoke gets to the ceiling, it will start coming down again. When it will reach, it will push, push in the oxygen down. Maybe by the time you are awake, the oxygen has been pushed down below your heart. The roof stays, that is, go down. You can scold. That's the one. If you scold and it's not convenient, lie down. You lie flat. You are lying flat. You can lie more than this if that is going to be the best thing that will be convenient for you. Lie totally flat on the floor. As you are lying flat on the floor, you want to crawl out of the building. How do you crawl out? You search. You search. What are you searching for? Light wire, an obstacle that can hit against your head, anything that can injure you. How do you search? You search to your sight. You search above your head. You are searching with the back of your palm, not your palm. If you start with your palm and you come across the live wire, there is a very high tendency you are going. But if you are starting with the back of your palm and you come across the live wire, this shock will repel you. You can find your way. Thank you, sir. As you are searching, if this place is clear, you move by it. You will say, crawl along the walls. If you cannot see anything again, if everything, look for the wall, crawl along the wall. No matter how far it is, every wall will lead you to an opening. No matter how far it is. When you get out to the wall, when you get out to the wall, the roof is, before you open that wall, fill the wall. Fill the wall. If the wall, sorry, fill the door, rather, fill the door. If the door is very off, do not open it. Why? There is fire outside. If you open it to that fire, the smoke from the fire will charge at you. The first thing you know was what the man I mentioned, I told the story to it, ran back into the building. You will not remember to close the door. The smoke will keep coming in. Do not open it. If you, and maybe let's say, if the building is, is just a building like this, we can look for somewhere where we can break and get out of the building. But let's put it like it's an high rise building. Or maybe another building. We know some of us, when you want to do your cold diary, you go for maximum security. Some of us turn our house to prison. Yes, maximum security. When you go for maximum security, Lock yourself. That's the that's the fire I said there when I was in the boomer shop. The professor is for double security. He's burglary. What thing that I think around twenty something MN iron for burglary proof. When the fire occurred, the fire started from the sitting room. He couldn't come to the sitting room again, so he needs to find a way through his room. His room, the iron on his window, there is no way for him to get out. When he started shouting, people in the community, they were brave enough to break a part of the world and take him and his wife, which is only just her through the place. They took, they took them out through the opening they made in their building. When you are constructing the building of your home, when you are entering into any property, when you are coming into any situation, like this room now, you know sometimes I look this way, look this way. Why am I looking? This all, the star walls like two doors, so that when there is fire, people can go in, go out through that place, and some of us through here, but I think the norm here is to lock one and open one. I after pharmacy one day too, when the lecture was going, only one out of the three doors were open. 
because we want to control. When there is a spark, a fire, anything in that hall, dogma, those students will not wait for you to pass first. They will pass first. They will stamp. They will stamp on you. They will, in fact, they will trap on you. They will give you a move. Yes. Glory fire. You don't even respect your mother. Money, you have to No. There is nothing like money, you have to in fire. Only pass first. Nothing like that in fire. That's why you now have good origin says, see no man join me. Tell me how many go. When there is fire, the instinct of everyone is to get out. You will not remember this is my boss. And that was you that want to control the class. You already closed the door. You that you are standing here, that are supposed to open that space, the JJ, the people that have already brought those place. You, you know, say, I'm coming from the back. This is the road. Ah, this is not the time for theater. This is the time for safety. So please, when we are having our lectures in halls, let's ensure means of escape are not blocked. When some people are constructing their houses, they will never think, if this my door is locked, how do I get out? Maybe some of them, they will have a proof, 18 mm, this mm, 16 mm. At least, if you are having two, three windows serving your room, you should have one that will be fabricated in such a way that can be opened to your family when it's fired. You constructed your building, you lock yourself inside like a prisoner. Some of you, when you want to sleep at night, you will lock your door. After you lock your door with the lock, you will still use the key. You know the next thing? You will remove the key. What's <laughs> more security? You will remove the key. Why you remove the key? I used to ask, why, why do people remove the key? So that they can lock the space. If there is fire, you will be looking for the key. When there is no fire, the key that sometimes you will be asking your children, do you take the key? <laughs> when there is no fire, you will be looking for that key, asking your children, do you take the key? You can stay on the table, maybe on that chair. Now, you've already removed the key now. You brought yourself inside. There is fire. You crawl to the door. Okay, will you not be crawling back and looking for keys? So this kind of situation, we need to, they are avoidable. There is a family, they want to go for one night service. They lock their children inside. Fire will come from within. The two children, the two children, they turn to ashes. Some of you, because you don't want your children to play with your neighbor, you lock them inside. You are thinking, no, when there is fire, what do you go to? I've talked about evacuation. Let me now talk about extinguishment. How do we extinguish fire? We extinguish fire by collapsing, by taking away one of the three elements that usually cause fire. If we can take out the fuel, if we can take out the heat, or we can take out the oxygen. For us to take out the fuel, let's say this chair is burning. All this one are yet to be born. Ability to remove the one that are yet to be born from the one that is burning. Or removing the one that is burning from the one that are yet to burn, vice versa, is called starvation. You are starving the fire of having more fuels. Two, you can quench fire by smoking by cutting out the supply of oxygen to the fire. When I say close the door, close the window, it's not that the fire will be hard, but the fire will be limited because some amount of oxygen will be coming in. But during the practical session of this class, we will demonstrate how we can cut out the supply of oxygen to fire. And three, he is taking away the heat by cutting down, by, by bringing down the temperature of the fire to the temperature below the initial temperature of the material that are born. For you to extinguish fire, you need material to use. You may need extinguishers, you may need fire blankets, some building, the installed sprinklers, 
the time, the stories. But you need to have that part of your mind that in your building, you need to have what we call fire plan. Someone ask me, if there's fire, what is that? Can we be able to remember all this? You crawl, you do this with the danger, with children. It seems very difficult to remember, but no, it's not difficult. That's why we call, we talk about fire safety plan. As a family, as a faculty, as a department, you need to come up with a fire safety plan. Okay, let's assume there's fire. How do we get up? You are the mother, you promise your children, this is the way you do it all, this is the way you go, if there's fire, this is the way you pass all. Some people, they give you means of this day. You pack one fish to break it. You need to demonstrate with your family so that everybody knows, okay, this is the thing we need to do. As a firefighter, I think there's somebody there. As a firefighter, that I want to go, maybe I'm in fire. Why fighting the fire? Maybe my hose or one of the equipment I'm using. Maybe it's not good. I'm in danger. But my mind will be on how the best to make use of my equipment because it has been registered in my brain. If fire safety plan is something you are doing regularly, it will be registered in you, in the family. Everybody knows what to do. During fire, people with disability, they are our properties. We need to look out for them. During emergency, there are three victims. One, normal victims. Two, hysterical victims. Three, unconscious victims. Normal victims, if you tell them, go this year. During emergency, go this way, they will go. There are some people, when they hear there is fire, they will be here now, shaking. They will not be able to move to the front or to the back. You think you want to come to them, maybe grab their hand, tell them, okay, oh, sir, let's go together. We call them hysterical victims. The last person to rescue in fire is your conscious victim. When someone is lying down already, they are the last person to rescue. Because you don't know if the person is still alive or not. And there is someone that you are seeing that doesn't know what to do, that you can take out of fire. Provide evacuation, evacuation chair for the people that cannot walk, so that when there is fire, they can go on the chair, people can roll them out, take them out. These are what we call fire emergency plan. We are planning not that the fire will happen tomorrow, Fire has a message for you. F, hi, how, E, take it with you. F, say, feel my presence around you always. When you are not attending to your body, feel the presence of fire. When you turn yourself to an electrician, feel the presence of fire. When you are plugging all your appliances and you are not attending to them, Feel the presence of fire. When you are enjoying your car, you are feeling the presence of fire. I say it. Inquire the risk associated for any problem. Just inquire. Think about it. How many years it takes you to put things to put together? If you want to put it together, how many years will you need the game? How many years will you still have been active service? Don't put it together. Now, remember the after effects. That's how. Reason. Reason the after effects. Just reason. Think about it. If I have a call now, the landlord, they will be looking for a room for him. Where is he? If I have a call now, that car, you will not even be able to have the tire. Stay tire, you will not have. All that is fine, it will not remain. They have side effects. The last E now say, educate your friend. 
Educate your family. Educate your children. Educate your neighbor. When your friend is putting candle on his wooden table, on his wooden chair, educate him. When your neighbor is holding refuse and is not attending to it, educate him. The map of good origin say, Siara Eliban Jebukumotilda, that will be something that you will share with him. You will not be able to stay. When there is fire in a building next to you, not even in your home, maybe around one in here, who is people? Educate your enemy, because your enemy will be your neighbor. You know, I don't want to talk to that man, this guy, guy is too much. But the man is born in abuse, you are not telling me. If the ember of fire from that abuse goes up, it will not even land on his building, it will be on your own. In the end, fire is dangerous. Fire is dark, fire kills. Many people are gone. If you don't take care of fire, if you don't handle fire properly, fire is a destroyer. Thank you for listening. And you put water on it, the petrol will go up, the water will go down, fire will keep going. That is why the fire scientists and engineers come about what we call home chemical compound. It's due to float. When you float, the purpose is to cover the surface of what is burning. Excluding the oxygen, the water within it will be cooling the fire as well. It is that fruit that people see and believe, oh, banana, banana, or shell. So when there's fire, they now go to buy detergent in a very large quantity. They get more water. When they put in detergent, people now say, when we put that like it works. It is your confidence that works. It is your belief that works. That when you put, what do you do? You put more water. In the effort of putting that detergent, you now start putting more water. Even if it doesn't go out, you will believe put more, it will go out. In the place of that, you are putting more water. You see when you throw, when you throw detergent, those throws, each one of them, those bubbles, they have space within. What is in that space? Here. When it goes in fire, what happens? It collapses. It gives fire more here. That's one. The ground that you so move, what happens to it? When you walk on it, it can fall down. You don't sleep it. You can fall down, break your hand. That is why firefighters used to say it is misconception. Omo doesn't have any property that relates to firefighting. We need smoldering, we need cooling. It doesn't have either. Now, the extinguishers. There are different classes of extinguishers. We have one um, carbon dioxide fire extinguisher. When we are very young, people that live in the village, when our grandma then, when they cook, or when they do something, they want to put the fire away, they very small fire. They will blow it from their mouth. What are they doing? They are pushing, and you told us that the, when we are bringing out, we are bringing out carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide they are bringing out, they are trying to use it to displace oxygen and quench the fire. It is the same carbon dioxide, carbon oxide, that is stored inside the cylinder. Now, under good pressure. So this one is carbon dioxide fire extinguisher or carbon dioxide fire extinguisher. The content is carbon dioxide gas. That's one. Two. We have dry chemical powder fire extinguisher. This one, the content is the powder. The carbon dioxide fire extinguisher is usually recognized for kitchens. For kitchens. Because the content is the carbon dioxide gas, is not perfect. So if there is a mini fire, a still fire in your kitchen, and you use carbon dioxide extinguisher on it, Every food item in your kitchen are still good for consumption. 
But the cost of this one is the powder. When you use it, the powder will spill. So this material is not good for construction again. But this is very effective on electric fire. If you have spray spray, yeah, those are not purpose. On car, but aside from your kitchen, an environment, maybe maybe in the world that can be you can have asthma patients and all that. Carbon dioxide is the best. Because when this powder goes up and your asthma patient inhale it, so you may have he or she may have an attack. So that is why the concept of this one is powder. We will use both when we get to the practical. Why do you need to have a extinguisher at home? Okay? Let's say you move to a new site. And they tell you that this new site will there are many snakes in the area. One of the things you will do is one, you will try to remove anti snake poison in your building to ensure food doesn't come in. As a man, when they come in, do you even want to have a weapon? So that when they snake come in, you will have something that you can even use to attack and defend your family. This is your weapon when they expire. Someone will say, since I've put my extinguisher for my car, like 10 years, I've never used it once. I have an analogy. Someone say, people that are even going to school now, they don't have a job, so I'm not going to school. One day, his brother just moved his territorial seat. Now, say, oh, I, can get, I can help you get a job in presidency, but we need a CSC. Now, say, my brother, I'm going to let me go to school and get it done. That, that is the analogy of someone that says, since I've got this, I've not used it. When you don't have it and there is fire, we don't tell the fire to wait that you want to go and buy one. So it is very important. When we get to the particular object, we set some fire. We need to to put out the fire. Then I'll tell you that when fire happens, it will not be more than that. When you have this tool to use, you save the place. When you don't have it, you will run out. Before you run in, the fire will become your landlord. Thank you again. We put here several times to put out fire here. I know several times we put out fire here. And uh, if fire is happening, if any of you just get over, maybe you are just passing by and see fire, the person will just open your phone, call you the live fire service. They are the number one fire family that belongs to you. Others will call, but we, if you want to need a link. So please take over. Um, is there a case one? Eight three six seven nine two eight one. I repeat zero eight one eight three six seven nine two eight one. Then you can equally call the seven six seven, which is the Lagos State Emergency something, at one two one. When you call it to the airport. Oh, 112, 112, and 767. They will ask you your problem or what challenges are happening. They will now direct them. Because in that place, it may be a, related, a police related issue. It can be anything happening. It can be an accident. If it is fire, they know where to direct you. Uh, the directly five and will come and take to you. Please, 767 and 112. So there's an officer here who's going to tell you all briefly how to operate this thing. Because it's very important so that when you get out there or when it, whenever it happens in the future, you get to know exactly. Because let me just tell you a very short story. In the US of Lagos, and then there's a one, there was a very big fire. As you, you are. And uh, those people there, it was after that, in fact, after that incident that the first police was there, some of these people were there. When they are on this fire, many people who are in that fire country and the rest, they don't know. They were throwing this thing to the very fire. They did it as, to buy this thing, you know, but I didn't go to put out the fire. All their fire is that were put into the fire, seriously. And nothing, just got burned, normally. 
because it cannot operate itself. It's there for we human beings to operate it the way it's being designed to be operated. So please, pay attention. They're going to tell you so that in case, because each of these departments is there for you, anybody can take it off and put out fire. You say, glory to yourself, to the Lord, your department, and to the glory of God. So I'll be inviting uh, Sino. Um, before we move when lecture was going on, uh, lecture said that the more time taking, the stronger the fire becomes. For example, is it in any plan to have a mini fire station in the College of Prince, which is part of Unilag? Because before you travel from uh, Unilag, if it happened already, it would be worse because of hold on. So if we have a mini fire station here that they have started battling with, with all our fire institution, then I think it will weaken the power before. So is there any plan on ground to have a finish station here? Yeah, thank you very much, sir. This is a very nice question. Uh, I'll be here with the University of Lagos for matter, myself. And uh, look, has never remained the way it is. No fire uh, station. This is purely an administrative question. I'm going to be here to tell you that your fire station is coming tomorrow or next tomorrow. It's very wrong of me. But you have one opportunity, you are staff here. You have a union here. You can raise your probably question to the management in whatever way, not rioting. And I believe you keep on telling them. If for the past half year, people have regularly informing the authority here that they need it to do something on it. Because a lot of fire we have come here, you might tell the way as our state from Unilag to this point. Sometimes we get to do a labor. Sometimes there was a day we are coming and there really we find the other side. No way to go. And the last one was even trying to like help in and do everything but those stop on driver control it was just okay. So it is very good for this management to happen. So even the security unit department can go. Okay, yeah, I learned that there's a plan already for here to have. So, so there's a plan to just come in place. A round of applause for the good. Okay, thank you. Let uh, the whole FA come to the express. Good morning, all. Well, what is said that is a plan on ground already, and uh, it will come on, on, on board any time from now. So we also want to come up. Yeah, I want to talk about the extinguisher here. Yeah, how do you operate it? When to operate it? Or how do you use it? As I said, some people now, maybe in a car, in, we employ different car users to have an extinguisher called dry chemical powder. These, as you see, they are nine cages. We have product six cages or five cages, smaller than this. We normally tell people to buy, put it inside. As we see, there is a gauge. The gauge tells you if it is charge or the charge. So when we go to outside there, we will tell you how to do this. There is a gauge there. When it's used, you will see the gate will fall down to red. When it's on green, it's fully charged. But we never want to use, even though we don't use the extinguisher, we need to recharge it. Because this is the power that we can take. Maybe when we want to use it, we not give it a result. So when you put an extinguisher, even though we don't use it, within six months, you give it to a smart for recharging. Like here we say we have a CO2 here. The code we normally use, we call it PASS. P A S S. P means pull out the safety pin. There's a safety pin here. When we go outside there, we will pull out the safety pin. Then A means aim at the base of the fire. Then S means squeeze the lever. 
then you let it spray side by side. So when we go outside, they will hear you. So another thing we have the uh, we have what we call a, a desert blanket. This one's placed in bushes. We may if you maybe then you are frying the door, you can like the fire comes in. You use it, you smother it. As we were told that when you cut off the oxygen, the fire will go. So when we go outside, they will set the fire, we use this blanket to tell you you use it in your kitchen. So, so that is the extinguisher. The word I say is pass. P A S S. If you use it in any way, you can operate that extinguisher. We call it portable fire extinguisher because it can be handled. The other ones that we call it trolley, it has wheels. They are bigger, 50 kg, 100 kg. And this is just 9 kg. We have 5 and 6. We normally get the uh, old car owners, you have that smaller type, maybe because of ferocity, they should not arrest you. But when the fire happens to your car, you discover that you just come at one minute to just go off. So you buy a better one, put at the back of your boat. In case of any time, you can use it. You can save another person for your car. So people buy a car, 10 million naira, 20 million naira. In that you cannot carry a steam machine that can save you and your car for just maybe 25 or 27,000 naira. So when we go outside, we practice it. So thank you. What you do is that uh, when you are busy, you are in your kitchen or house, maybe you are gas, that's your, like we, know, we don't talk about the gas. Many of us have gases in our homes. We normally say, it, if your gas is more than 6 kg, because we have 8 and above, put it outside your home. Put it outside your home, pass the hose from the cylinder to the burner. Please do inspect your hose every year and then, because rats can pierce it. Then they can some of us we don't hear the smell of what we've got. When you inspect and you discover that they they go that yes, then you don't know. I bought the gas. I've been in the phone. Even though when you say my name, you get a bite. So inspect when it is. Uh, mm -hmm. Never done this kind of thing. That is why, if it comes like that, can you handle this? You can provide the whole system. There is a good protector right there. You hold it there. This is what we are going to do. This is just the fire we set. That we are talking about. You may not even if you just don't work. Then the man will be taken away. You may not even know what to do. Yes. This is the practical aspect. Yeah. You are going to have to cover yourself. So if you cover yourself, don't rush. If you rush, you can still be content and it's still over. So go with use of confidence, cover the fire, and you tie it around so that oxygen has no place of coming in. Then you open it the same way you put it. So if fire wow. remains, you cover it back. So this is the fire you set. Around. If you see the if you see the smoke that come after that fire, it's very dark. That's why those are the smoke you are talking about that will be your when fire will come and you are keep at it. That's why. Let me go again, see the way I go. So, can we use um, any other can we use any other blankets? No, no, no. Apart from the blanket wet, 
He said, is the blanket wet? This is a fire asbestos blanket. Okay. It's recommended for fire purposes. Okay. Just take it. No need of saying you want to wet or anything. Take it. Take it to the fire. Use it to cover the fire. When the fire is contained, like your burner, like your cooking stove, like anything, this fire is contained. It's with you. It's beautiful. When fire happens from your frying pan, it's not be as big as this. Yes. If you can do this, it's me, you can do that one too. Instead of you running out of you your kitchen, you started looking for what is not Beautiful. Thank you very much. It's to buy the blanket. This blanket is not don't fear, don't fear, don't fear. Not the magic. There's a man here. When I do something 1,000 times, I've never failed. I'm learning another 1,000 way of doing it better. If you extinguish the fire once and the fire is not out, you do. If you want to put it once, it's not very good. You learn another way to do it better. That's good. So, if if you want to take the extinguisher yeah. and you hold it like this, okay. this thing will not remove. Right, because I've already, because you've already put the pressure, pressure on the pin. So you need to remove the pin first. First, that's why the first pin is pull out the pin. As the extinguisher is done, you to remove the tamper proof, pull out the safety pin. Okay. So, thank you. 
No, don't worry. Let, let them put the fire on the fire. Yes. You are holding it right. You hold it. Okay. Yeah, just put it down. Set fire first. You, are, you don't prepare when there is no fire. <laughs> you don't have to wait. Oh, yeah. That is why you We aim at everywhere that happens to be the The closer you are, the strike the thing is, the thing is, when this thing happens, either you will use many. That is why some of you that buy extinguisher for your car, you normally go and buy road safety fire extinguisher. That's what you buy for your car. Road safety fire extinguisher. Buy it because of road safety. Buy it somebody come. Somebody. Hello. Yeah, good. Fantastic. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It is the same. It is the same purpose. The difference. The difference is just the content. This one makes sense. This one doesn't make sense. This one just come. The content is powder. That's why we don't say where you have asthmatic patients and all that. Use this one. Use this one. You know, after we use this one now, everywhere is clear. When we use this one now, here will be dispatched. Okay. Definitely. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, no, no, when you are pressing this down and say what you do, you just relax your hand. You move the yeah, have to see. The first. Get the move the up, fire. then move closer. Move Emma closer. Make that the base. Don't fight the boy on the fire. Press. Yes. 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 Yes.